be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, along with my partner and uh, partner in crime, Max Massiano, welcoming you to episode 24 of Rabbit Trail. Max, how you doing, Ooh-hoo. buddy? <laughs> So listen, I'm great. I, wanted... I just want to preface everybody <laughs> that I have a little yeah. bit of a delay on my end. So if we're not quite in sync, that's why. Technical difficulties. It's storming here. So yeah, so you'll have to consider Max the reporter on location. He's actually in the woods. <laughs> and so there will be a, a little slight delay. So Please bear with us during these momentary pauses as I wait for his response. So, Max, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good. Uh, You know, just another day in paradise. How about you, Dennis? Uh, We're doing fine. We're doing fine. It's a warm day here in California, and... uh, uh, actually, we just have filming today. I have a class tomorrow, but, um, you know, last night we went out and uh, had a nice evening with the people in my wife's dog club, and we celebrated uh, the accomplishments that uh, everyone's dog had made over the year. This was supposed to be the, uh, the big dinner for 2020, which, of course, <laughs> didn't happen And so now it's happening at the end of 2021. So we're actually a year behind, but uh, (laughs) it was fun. (laughs) It was fun. But, oh, baby, social media is going crazy. Not only did COVID interrupt your dinner, but it did something else, which we heard about on social media. Can you believe it? Uh, It's crazy. So today's episode is entitled, is entitled, Can the Crutch? (laughs) So Max, uh, when we talk about, you know, the crutches that we use in this business, I think that we see that happen a lot. I mean, in the beginning of our careers, many of us, you know, that was our normal, what we were taught to do. Uh, But today, you know, people still don't take accountability for the things that happen. And I'm going to tell you, statistics show us that 95% of the problems that we have happened to us in the color process have nothing to do with product. They have everything to do with personal behavior. Sure. So how do you feel about that, yeah, Max? It's, I would say that it's always, and I made a post about this the other day, so that's why this is so fitting, an error in evaluating the canvas, formulation, application, or combination of two or more of those. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think many times when a color goes, what I call goes sideways, before you start to blame the product, take a moment and go through your checklist of the things, the behaviors did you execute all the appropriate behaviors in this color process? Now the we lump, yes. We'll get our sink gonna, down here. We'll get our I, sink down. This is so <laughs> strange. I feel like we're underwater or something. Um, are you gonna Are you gonna read the post? Or are we just gonna? Oh, I'm going to read the post. Okay, okay, okay. So, are you ready? Here's the first post. 
And this was posted on social media. I will not tell you where, but it was in a group that I cannot respond in <laughs> because <laughs> they would recognize me. So I just have to simply observe. So this is my moment to respond if any of those people that are in that group are following Max and I. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> Question. Has anyone else been having trouble with shades? This is a shade EQ question. With shades not processing correctly. I've had to retone so many people in the last month that I'm ready to switch colors. So she's ready to throw out the baby with the bathwater. All right. I'm scared that they're not reliable anymore. Oh, now we're blaming the product. I used to love them and now I can't even get a hint of pigment. Lifting my clients to levels I tone them is must, so I know I'm formulating correctly. I have a client lifted to a level eight, for those of you that are taking notes, okay? And I use an 8V and I also mix it with an 8N, and it still looks chicken yellow. I never even toned her before, okay? Process for 20 minutes, so she processes it for the recommended time. It's like that for most of my clients, I've toned with Redken, and I'm totally frustrated. So let's take a moment <laughs> and let's talk about this. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, Shady Q was created in 1986. It launched in 1988. So that's a lot of years. I think we're 40 some years now. Do you seriously think that a product that this hairdresser has been using for a period of time suddenly stops working? I don't think so. I don't think so. But instead of looking to see maybe there's something I did that I should have been aware of, we immediately want to blame the product. There are three things that we talk about when we talk about crutches that hairdressers in our industry use. Number one, the first one is called justify. So most of the time that is when a color comes out not the way we expected, we type, try to justify it. And we try to justify it based upon, well, you know, I don't know why. I did exactly what they said. I processed it for 20 minutes. I, I know what I'm doing when I formulate. You know, I use the proper color. And so we try to justify the situation rather than saying, wait a minute, why didn't it work out? So let's take the first part of that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> So Max, uh, she said that, well, let's go to her formula. She said that she lightened the hair to a level eight. So according to many teachings, a level eight is gold, which is yellow orange. And she used equal parts of an eight natural in shade DQ, eight N, and she used also a V. Now I'm gonna give them the benefit of doubt when they say that the Violet family in that line has no background. Because I, I can't imagine right. that there is no background in those colors. But we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. All right, so let me uh, get my little thing here. There we go. So if she lightened the hair to gold, gold is two parts of yellow and one part of red. You can write this down if you're taking notes. So then she used 8N. That's part of the Shade GQ Natural family. And according to their swatch book, the N series is brown to tan, which means brown to light brown. Okay, so brown is one part of blue two parts of red and three parts of yellow, plus they have blue-violet, which is 
two parts of blue and one part of red. That's the, the N series. The violet series, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They say they have no background, then all they have is violet. Violet is one part of blue and one part of red. So everything I've given you in parts right now is all there is to work with. Now remember, when we're coloring here, we're not covering the existing color. We're marrying the two colors together. So we have to keep that in mind. It's like pixelation on a TV screen. Secondly, we have to remember a law of color, a law of science, which says <clears throat> you cannot neutralize at the same level. Because at a level eight, there is a specific amount of pigment in a level eight color. There's also a specific amount of pigment in a level eight lift that the hair is contributing. So let's just give it an arbitrary number, let's say five. Let's say there's five units of control in my level eight that I'm using, and there's five units of warmth that the hair is contributing. There's no way I'll be able to neutralize that level eight because I have the same amount of control as I have of warmth. Does this make sense to you? Because remember, we're not covering it. We're marrying the things together like pixelation. So when I map this out, what I see she has is she ends up with brown, she ends up with gray, she ends up with gray, and she ends up with violet. Well, if I wanna really kill yellow orange, I don't wanna finish having extra violet in my color, I wanna have extra blue in my color. Because if you look at the color wheel, the complementary color for orange is blue. So to begin with, the formulation was a warm formulation. Yes, they use violet, but violet is the weakest cool there is. And so that's why she still ended up with warmth. I don't think the hair was chicken yellow because she never got it to chicken yellow if she actually lifted it to a level eight. It wouldn't have been that way. And there's no way you can tone it and then have it now go a level lighter and become chicken yellow. So can you see the inconsistency in formulation there? Now, I'm sure this person's a good hairdresser. I am sure they work very hard at what they do. But that's not formulating for success. That's formulating for fear. I, I am so fearful of that warmth. I'm going to do anything I can to try to kill it. Max, what do you think about that formula? <laughs> well, I think that she she definitely was just trying to bury as much stuff as she could with it. But I I probably would have approached it a little differently, personally. Please share with us. So uh, if we were if we're looking at a uh, yellow orange and we really wanted to try to do as much maximum neutralization as possible, we would look across the color wheel. The opposite of yellow orange is blue violet. Mm -hmm. And I would use something that had a blue violet base and possibly if I had something available that didn't have background in it, I wouldn't use that either. I would just use something that was straight blue violet so that I'm not influencing the, the depth of my end result. Right. But that's just me. I, I think that's great. And that, can you see how mentally he walks through the steps? He talked about what each part was contributing. Remember, I mean, and even they admitted that on this post that, well, someone posted and, and shared it with them, is that whatever the hair contributes will be 50% of the end result. That again, lets you know that we're not painting over something, we're actually marrying two colors together. So we right. want to have enough depth in our 
color to, that we want to mitigate warmth with, we want to have enough depth in that color so that it completely, you know, mitigates any of those warm tones so you don't really see them at all. And so here's a situation of, again, where we now we start to not only justify why that happened, we now start to lay blame. Lay blame is a second crutch that we use a lot in this industry. We blame someone else for our poor results. Redken, they are starting to screw up. Ah, they've been bad. I've, you know, I've used the same formula on my client for the last six years. Hold on. Why are you using the same formula on your client for six years straight? I'm going to tell you right now, and I don't know your clients, in a period of six years, that hair is not the same at the end of the sixth year that it was at the beginning when you started with her, based upon not only the natural pigmentation in the body, but based upon what has happened to that hair. How many times have you colored it? Is there porosity in that hair? Has she gone to the beach and come back? All of that changes everything. So <laughs> why are you using the same formula? Here's the reality of it. And here's something you need to write down is that after you do the first virgin hair color application on a client, from that point on, everything is color correction. You are continually tweaking and adjusting that formula based upon what that hair goes through between hair color appointments. Max, how do you feel about that? Oh, I, I completely agree 100%. Yeah, so I think that what we have to really realize is that most of our issues have to do with our own personal behaviors. And that's hard for us to accept, <clears throat> you know, because we're really emotional people. Don't tell me that I'm not doing the right thing because my intention is to do the right thing. And my mentor used to always say to me, he said, you know what? We judge others. We judge ourselves on our intentions. We judge others on their actions. So maybe I intended to do all the steps, but I miss one. It happens. I mean, everybody can remember when you walked into the back dispensary room and your brain melted. In fact, you had to go back out and take a second look at the head of hair that you just walked away from. So there's nothing to be feel bad about, but it's to ask yourself, what are the steps that I, that I missed? Here's an example. I'm gonna use a, a metaphor. If the archer competing at the Olympic games misses the bullseye, they don't look at their bow and say, what's wrong with my bow? And they don't look at their arrow and say, oh, something must be, this arrow must be crooked. They ask yourselves three questions. Number one, were my feet far enough apart? Because that's the foundation. When you're doing archery, you have to have the proper stance. Second of all, did I hold my bow at the right angle to allow for the flight of the arrow so that it would create it would travel the distance required to hit the target. And three, did I pull the bowstring back with the proper amount of tension so that it would give the arrow enough energy to travel to the target? All three of those things are not constants, they're variables. And they can affect whether or not you score a bullseye or whether or not you miss the target completely. In hair color, it's the same way. There's things we have to ask ourselves. Did I do the right thing? You know, when we go to justification, we, we, blame, we blame our clients a lot of times. We justify it because we say, well, I was, uh, you know, her hair wasn't clean. Well, why didn't you shampoo it? Um, she doesn't use the right shampoos. Well, that's on you. You know, someone says to me, well, my clients refuse to use shampoos. I said, well, then what, what happened in your consultation? <clears throat> they said, well, I told her about it. Did you persuade her? You know, 
influencing people to purchase products because we know they'll work well to support the color is a skill set. Most of us didn't learn that in beauty school. We learned how to cut it off, roll it up, and paint it on. We didn't really learn how to, how to work with the client, how to negotiate with the client. And that's why some people say, well, I don't do retail in my salon because they won't buy it. Well, I disagree with you. I always say to people, I don't even do retail. I don't even call it that. It's service support. That means that in the consultation, when I talk to a client, I say to them, there are specific products you'll be required to use to maintain your color while you are away. I'm going to use those on your hair during your visit today, and I'll have your home care regimen waiting at the front desk so you can keep your hair looking beautiful between salon visits. I didn't ask her to think about buying product. I didn't ask her to consider buying product. I said she had to buy product because all of my services are guaranteed 100% only if you use the home care regimen. So when people say, well, <clears throat> I have this kind of issue, that kind of issue, I have a hard time relating to it because my clients use the products. Max, how do you feel about that? Uh, completely agree. You know, 100%. And, you know, just personally, sometimes, like, at least for me, when I'm working behind the chair, sometimes I'll, I'll kind of get into a little routine and I'll make a mistake. I won't, you know, necessarily think something through. And if my color goes sideways, the first thing I look at is, all right, well, what did I do? You know, and nine times out of 10, I can figure out kind of where I sort of stubbed my toe or right. I missed that or, you know, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, you know, hair color, developer, lightener, these products don't have brains. They don't know what you're putting them on and they don't care. They typically, if you use them properly, are designed to do a specific thing and they will do it no matter what you apply it to. It may not give you the result you wanted, but that's, you know, kind of the deal. So it's like, Again, it, it went back into an error in my analysis. Maybe I misjudged the natural level incorrectly. Maybe I misjudged the porosity. You know, who knows? But, you know, first evaluating that hair strand, then your formula, doing your mapping, really looking at what the hair is giving you, what you're putting in your bowl, and how the combination of those two are going to give you your end result. And then there's also application. Application is so key. You know, crummy application equals crummy end result, period. You could have a great formula, but if you're just like, you know, like, and, and not really caring or missing hair or not saturating, again, you can go, that lightener doesn't lift. But if you didn't saturate the hair in the foil, or if you're painting, it doesn't matter, you know, it's still, it's on you, it's the application. You know what, Max, it's such a strong point that you're making. It's, it's just simply application. Let's eliminate all product. Just think about application. Yeah. And I want you to watch this. When the salon is very busy, and if someone is in a hurry, if they're running behind, watch, when they do their application, look at the size of section that they take in relationship to what they take in a normal appointment schedule. Because, and this is subconscious. I mean, so when you say, well, I don't do this, really? Really? <laughs> I, taught, I taught at the Redken Exchange in New York City for 16 years. And I had people who would come to that class and they would say, I don't do this in the salon but they certainly did it in the classroom. And here's what my mentor always said, what you do is what you do. The only thing is you don't recognize it because it's a subconscious behavior. 
you'll see those sections go from an eighth of an inch in width to a quarter of an inch in width. You know, and you'll see them sometimes they'll skip around the hairline. You know, those, you know, those clients that are not quite brunette, not quite blonde, and you're trying to color their hair. So the hair actually kind of disappears when you put color on it and, and you miss, like you find when you're shampooing it off, you got like two hairs here that you missed and three hairs over here that you missed <laughs> and you're already washing the color off the head. <laughs> So you say, here, let me put some foundation around your hairline here. You know, <clears throat> but what I'm saying to you is that these are behaviors that you do subconsciously. So you have to watch what you do. And, and if you can't watch what you do, you should have someone watch what you do. Or better yet, take your phone, for God's sakes, buy yourself a tripod, film yourself doing your color application, then go back and watch it. You'll be shocked at the things that you do subconsciously that you don't even recognize. And it's just, it's the way we love to, to blame the product. Lay blame is a big place for us. You know, it's like, I'm going to tell you, all bleaches will lighten hair to blonde. I don't care who makes it, they'll all take hair to blonde. There's no bleach that won't do that. If it's a bleach, it will lighten hair to blonde. So when people say, well, this bleach lightens her better than another bleach, yeah, you know, yeah. I think, you know, it's a personal choice, but all bleaches will lighten the hair. That's what they're designed to do. They are decomposing products. <laughs> That's what they do. But we want to blame them. The same thing about gray coverage. I think the problem with us is that we call it coverage as though we're covering something. And you're not covering gray hair when you color gray hair. You're not. You're still mixing what the hair contributes with what the color contributes, simply that the hair has no pigmentation in it. So the hair contributes zero. <laughs> and so what you're adding to it, you know, you're really blending those colors together. So when someone says to me, you know, what color covers gray best? I say all colors will cover gray, if that's the term you're using. Well, no, they won't. Because when we say cover gray, for some of us, we think of wiping out every gray strand that's on the head. Again, formulating for fear instead of formulating for success. Because I think Max and I talked about this last week. Client comes into you. She's an older client. She has white hair. She has pink scalp and she wants her gray hair covered. And so you wipe it out. You use the more opa most opaque result that you try to create. Guess what? That little pink scalp comes screaming out and it accentuates the fact that she doesn't have much density on her head <clears throat> and she's not really happy with that. But now you made me look bald. So for that client, I don't, I don't always, <laughs> right? I don't always try to, to wipe everything out. I try to create translucency in that color so it has dimension, so it has reflect. So even though it looks like she's got tone in her hair, it doesn't make the scalp jump out. It doesn't create that strong contrast. And when we right. cover gray, I hear so many people, they don't even talk about that. They only talk about wiping out the gray. And, and you have to be really thinking about those kinds of things. So, <clears throat> you know, stop blaming the product. Max, here's another one. Um, she said she went into the dispensary to grab clear to use it on the hair for shine. And she mixed it up and she accidentally, it was number three. And, they, and she said, well, because they don't label their colors very well. And I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> First of all, the minute you mix a color, you should notice the difference between a three and clear, which has nothing in it. Three's going to get a little deep a little quickly. <laughs> Newsflash, then, breaking news, everybody. <laughs> and then you blame them for labeling their color. God, give me grace. I just kind of go, are oh, you yeah, kidding yeah. me? 
And then you have the nerve to post that on social media. So like not only people like me can go, whoa, dum da dum 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 dum. <laughs> but everybody else in the world that understands anything about mixing color can do the same thing. So, you know, those kinds of things are, are crazy. And, and of course, you know, Max, we talked about COVID a minute ago and I, I, it's right on social media. I'll read it to you. I mean, I, I, take, I took these right off of social media. I want you to know that I'm not, I'm not fabricating <laughs> any of this. Oh, I know you did, bud. And this, this one logged on and said, between people that have had COVID and people that have been vaccinated a lot, my colors have been turning out different or not taking on some people. It doesn't matter the brand of color. Okay, listen to me. COVID is a virus that affects the lungs. It has nothing to do with the hair. And it, if the vaccine, and I don't know how that's possible, but let's imagine it is. Let's say the vaccine, because you, you got the shot, let's say it, it was in your system, it worked its way and it was then excreted through your sebaceous oils because that's the excretory glands on your head <clears throat> and it wicked out onto the hair. Is it possible it could have a, a detrimental effect to the result? Yes, but then why didn't you clarify the hair first? That's what clarifying the hair means. Exactly. If I clean the hair, mm -hmm. I have a clean canvas on which to work. Max, how do you feel about that? Blame it on COVID. That's like blaming it on aspirin. I'm not blaming it on COVID. And the, and you got uh, the other thing that, you know, I think our audience needs need to know too is clarifying the hair is amazing, but also manufacturers put chelators in the hair color just in they case do. people don't clarify <laughs> the hair. So, sorry, <clears throat> it, it's just not, you know, yeah. Yeah. hard pass, hard pass yeah. on that one. So, justify, lay blame, and the final one, denial. That's a good one. It ain't just always... a river in Egypt. <laughs> Amen. It's not just a river in Egypt. Client looks in the mirror and she goes, ah, my hair color looks a little, looks a little flat, a little ash, looks a little green. Oh, it's not green. Come on outside. And you grab the hand mirror and you take her out oh. in the parking lot and you have her hold her head at a 45 degree angle. So the sun reflects off the hair and you give her the hand mirror and he goes, can you see the green's gone? Oh yeah, I see the green's gone. Okay, good. Instead of saying, well, wait a minute, let me look at this. You know, let, let's think about what kind of lighting do you spend? If, you, if you're working under fluorescent lights, cool blue, even the ones that are supposed to emit daylight light, okay, there's a possibility that your neutral tones will look a little ash. Because, not because of what you created, but because of the lighting and the way the lighting affected it. That is why you can't, the colors will not look the same in all lighting. You can't do that. You can't create a color that'll look the same in all lighting because light rays travel in a straight line. They, you can't bend them. And so what happens is based upon how the person's standing, is there a shadow or anything like that, it will affect the way the color looks based upon the lighting that that client is in. So first thing clients need to know is that your color is not gonna look the same in all lights. If you go home and you still have old incandescent bulbs, mm -hmm. your hair will look warm. It will look very yeah. warm. You know, if you go home and you have cool blue lights or fluorescent lights, here's the thing about fluorescent lighting. Fluorescent lighting mitigates the warmth 
And it also does it's what we call a 180 degree wash. In other words, if you have fluorescent lights in your ceiling, then a light shines down, it washes out 180 degrees. So it'll flatten a whole area actually wider than the fluorescent light fixture. Now wow. you can correct that. There is something called a parabolic lens that you can put into that fixture and that directs the light to go straight down. So you can, st it's still going to create a wash. It's gonna mitigate warmth, but it, you can use it for navigation and not have it interfere in the color of the hair you're creating, hair color you're creating. Sure. I'm an electrician too, Max, what can I say? <laughs> Lighting expert. <laughs> well, you know, all those things are important and then that's a reason sometimes people are maybe not happy with their color, it has nothing to do with what you formulated, it has everything to do with the lighting in which they're looking at it. You know, so, sure. so denial, I, I always say, be accountable. If you look at that hair and you know, we've all had these conversations at the shampoo bowl as we're shampooing it out and we're looking at it and that little voice in our head goes, mm, it's right on the edge. And then you start negotiating with yourself. Well, is it close enough that they won't notice it till they get outside? <laughs> Do I, do I really have to- Or into that? their bathroom. <laughs> yes. Or, That's or, the worst phone I... call ever. I looked at my yes. hair in my bathroom and now it's red. <laughs> so those kinds of things, and Max, you're so right. You know, it's like, here's what I always say. When they look in the mirror and they're at the end of their service and they, they're happy with it, they go, my color looks great. Then they go home and they go into their bathroom and they see it in a different light and then they call you and they go your hair color faded we get possession back of the service right it's their hair color when they leave it's your hair color when it doesn't look right so be accountable for it exactly and and, and understand that we all make those mistakes and that we all have a tendency to justify deny and also lay blame. It's a human characteristic. We're not saying that they're bad people because we do this. We're saying it's part of our human characteristic. So you've got to be having conversations with yourself. Go, wait a minute. Am I justifying this? Did I just hear myself blame somebody else or blame a product right. for the performance? We have to, we have to stop that because... When we take accountability for what we're doing and we understand that 95% of the problems that we face have nothing to do with product, they have everything to do with the mechanics. As Max said, did you clarify it? How did you section it? How did you mix your color? Did you formulate properly? You know, all of those things that we call variables that are liable to change, you know, I mean, even a, an, a change in your mixture, even a, we add too many colors in our formula. All of these things can add to and increase the chance of a color going sideways and creating frustration for us, creating disappointment for our clients. And of course, <clears throat> then forcing us to, to blame a product that's been around for 45 years and even though I don't work for that company anymore, I can guarantee you that product is still a good product. It obviously works very well because these were a couple of people. Imagine how many bottles of that hair color were opened on that very day and had amazing success. So when we have thousands of hairdressers worldwide using the same color you used and your color didn't come out right, it's on you. You have to look at that. <laughs> wow. Were we on a rant today, Max? I was on a rant. I'm Ooh. so sorry. You need a coily cord for me, man, so I can you go, Dennis, stop, stop. <laughs> Rain it in. My lasso. You know, it's just that I want people to be successful in this business. I don't want you to be your own worst obstacle. And sometimes we are. I get it. 
You know, and, and it's like we always say, you hear Max saying it, you hear me saying it, you hear our, our friends, you know, Yvette Fontenay and Christina and Elaine Travis, you know, all, all of you. Yes. David Peacemaker, they're all saying the same thing. You know, James uh, Atkinson, they're all saying the same thing. Be accountable for what you're doing. Master hair color. Don't try to master a brand. Don't try to be that way. And that way you can control your future and you can avoid a lot of these problems. Now, I'm not going to say you're never going to have a problem yeah. because even the best colorists in the world, well, let me tell you what my mentor told me, Max, one day. And I tell people about him because if you were never had the opportunity to be with him, you missed a great opportunity. He was the most genteel person you would ever meet in your life. He had color stains from the tip of his fingers up to his elbows, snowy white hair. <laughs> and we were standing at the, the cabinet mixing color. And one day he says to me in a very quiet voice, he goes, Dennis, you know the difference between you and I? And I said, no, Sam, what is the difference between you and I? He said, we will both have hair colors that go sideways. I can fix mine. Can you fix yours? That's what he said. He quietly threw down the gauntlet and said, I can fix mine. Can you fix yours? And so I will say to all of you, right. hair colors are going to go sideways. Results are going to come out sometimes like you didn't expect. But it's okay if you know how to work around it. It's not okay if you try to justify it, lay blame, or deny it. So, Max, anything else you want to add? Okay. Max, did you I mean, hear me? I, no, I'm here. You're just, <laughs> my connection is garbaggio. The biggest thing that I, I, I want to just add to this is if you make a mistake try to backtrack look at what you did and learn from it it's there's always an opportunity there to learn something and then you know take that with you forward and that's you know that's what it's about yeah absolutely it is and um that way the industry will grow the quality of services will grow and the confidence, you know, for people who are wanting to master the world of hair color and people who want to be, you know, carve out their pathway to success, it will happen for you. It's in your hands. Yeah. Your future is in your own hands. That's the one I love about this industry is that really you can dictate where your future is going to lead you. Um, but you have to, as my mentor always said to me, you must stay right. passionate and you must stay committed. Okay. Passionate seems simple. What happens when I'm no longer passionate about my business? That means you've lost your purpose. See, when I hear people and I see them, they've been doing hair for 10 years and now they're burned out. I kind of go, oh my God, God bless you. I feel so bad for you because you can't be possibly burned out because you've not gone through the 80s and you've not gone through, you've not gone through the 90s. So you can't possibly be burned out when we work three chairs at a time. I mean, that's just not, that's not the mindset of today's hairdresser. Today's hairdresser usually works one chair, maybe two, but usually one. So when I hear someone say they're burned out, I say they lost their purpose. They're not, they don't have the passion anymore. And if you don't have the passion, you definitely don't have the commitment any longer. And Max, you got all wonky on me there just a moment ago, man. I mean, you blacked out on me and then came back. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> God, brother, this has been a strange one today. So, look, uh, I'm going to take us down to the end I here. Mean, so I want to thank all of hey, you for watching us. End. Yes. Thank all of you for watching us here on YouTube channel. Well, please, you know, if you click the bell down below, it'll uh, notify you when we do our next, uh, when our next uh, Rabbit Trails post. 
please subscribe to our channel. We invite you to do that. If you find this information beneficial, please share it with your friend. Our goal is to help you become more successful, to help you discover your own personal genius. We invite you to follow us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. Be sure you mark your calendars on Thursday nights. Pretty much now, we're getting together with Captain Color and friends, which is Max and I, Yvette Fontenay, who's a wonderful educator out of Chicago, Illinois, and Christina out of Montreal, Canada. And we just have a fun little uh, one-hour evening session where we talk about the issues of the day and answer some questions and things of that sort. Be sure you catch my interview with James Atkinson on Life of Hair. It's now already up on YouTube. James uh, was uh, reached out to me, asked me to do an interview with him. What a wonderful human being he is. We had a great time together. We did almost an hour and a half, and uh, it's really been great. I was so glad to be part of his program that he does on YouTube on a regular basis. And then uh, also Max and I are doing a, uh, this month, right, Max? We're doing Delete It Number Two, am I right? At the end of uh, August. And what I'll do yeah, is... Uh, I, well, we've got something on the 25th. <laughs> on the 25th. So I'm going to post it here. It's probably already above my head. Uh, it'll be posted on what we're doing here in August and things of that sort. And, um, you know, please stay in touch with us. Follow us on... Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Guru Nation. Uh, you can also go to our website... Uh, which would be uh, www.gurunation.net and uh, take a look at our educational page, things that we have to offer. Some people have problems logging on to our educational page because of their browser that they're using. So if you are on Instagram, all you have to do is to go to my Instagram page at Real Captain Color and just simply tap on the link that's in my bio. It will take you immediately to the educational page so you, and, and you can process from there. You can actually go to everything on the website. I put that up there to avoid having to send people alternative links to get to the website. Now they just tap it and you're there. So Max, whoa, what a day, man. I feel, I feel like I've been running. A, <laughs> I'm sure when I play this back, my voice is going to be. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> All but I have man, to do is have fun editing this bad boy. <laughs> but it's been fun, my friend. Thank you so much. All the time. I mean, this has All really it. been weird for us because we've not actually been able to connect on this broadcast. So I'm sitting here waiting, going, "Come on, Max, come on." Yeah, now Max is probably going. I can't. I got to wait till I hear what you say. I can't respond. So this is one for the books, man. I think we covered some good information today, but I also think it's going to be very strange. But uh, anyway, that makes it all fun for life and all that good stuff. Cool. Oh, oh. Hi, right, Max. Our ride is here. Your ride is definitely here, my friend. Take care of yourself, everybody. Thanks definitely. so much for watching us. And uh, as you always, too. my thank my you, everybody. Here, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. We'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.